Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to this quick tip for Apple Motion. And today I'm going to show you a trick for creating composition templates that will allow you to work more efficiently and quickly. So let's take a look. So I'm sure you're familiar with the idea of using templates to create effects, titles and generators for Final Cut. But something you might not have considered is using templates if you're just working in motion, because you can actually create composition templates. And that's what I'm going to suggest you might be interested in doing here. So I've actually got a composition template that I'm going to show you how to make. So I'm going to get, come to new from Project Browser and I've made a category called tutorial and I've got this template called very useful stuff and I'm going to open it up. Now, what I've actually done here is I've set it to 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second, 10 seconds long, the basic project parameters that I always use. What I've also done is come down and set the shutter angle to 180 because I actually like the shutter, shutter angle to default to 180 rather than 360. I've also come over to render and set that to best. So those are some of the basic things you can set up that you don't then need to worry about. But I've also created a whole variety of different things. We've got this little rig here where I can choose my background color. And I've also got a text group here. And you probably know that sort of formatting text is a bit of a pain. So here I've got a nice centered text block. And I've also got in this group, I've got a paragraph text as well. Looks like that. So let's set this all up from scratch and I'll show you how I've done it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new project and this is just to be a standard motion project. As I say, I'm going to go with 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second and a duration of 10 seconds. So let's create that. So the first thing I always want to do is to have a nice black background if possible. So let's drag in a color solid and obviously the color solid defaults to blue. So let's just change that to black. But it's also quite useful to have a grey background. So let's duplicate that colour solid and let's make this one mid grey. And while we're at it, why not let's have a white in there as well. So duplicate again, make that white. But it would also be pretty handy to be able to switch between them using a rig. So I'm going to select my top colour solid. Doesn't matter which one of them it is. I'm going to make clone layer and come over to the clone controls and I'm going to right click here and add to rig, create new rig, new pop-up. And so let's just rename these. So this is white. Let's select the next snapshot and let's drag that gray color solid into the source well. And you can see that's now gray. So let's rename this as gray. Let's select the next one and rename that as black. And let's drag in our black color solid. And then what we can do is we can publish this pop-up, come over to the project. We can call this background color. And then, you know, we can select our color background from this pop-up if we wanted to. Now, I'm not at all suggesting this is something you'd necessarily want to do, but depending on your workflow, there may well be components that you can add to a rig that will make the template extremely useful to you. So we could call this group background. Let's go about setting up a group for the text. So right click new group. Let's call this text. Now text is always a pain, isn't it? So select the text tool, type out some text. So centered text block. And of course it defaults to left justified and I don't like that. So I can set it to, oops. Select all the text, set it to centered. Always comes in too small for my money. So I'm going to set that size to 200. I'm going to just reduce the line spacing. I like that sort of line spacing like that. Come over to properties, reset the position. Let's come back over to the text and set that baseline to something like 125. So it's nice and centered up. So that, there's quite a lot of steps there just to get me to this sort of basic thing that I always use. I always want my text centered. I always want the transform to be reset and so on. So that's quite useful. But we could also just select the text tool, drag out a paragraph text, come over to layout. Let's set the left margin to negative 8, 10. I mean, you can use any margins you want, but I'm going to use these. Right margin 810, top margin 480 and bottom margin 480. 
and then come over to properties. We need to center this up. Oops, what have I done wrong there? Oh yes, I've got my top and bottom wrong. So top margin wants to be 480. There you go. So again, we can just type some basic text in there to remind ourselves. So we've set up a paragraph text that we can use, or we can use the other text block that we've made. So that's text. Another thing I like to do is have some basic gradients. So let's come in and grab a gradient, drag that out into a new group. Let's just move that above that so we can see it. And let's call this gray ramp. So let's set up our colors. This one I want to be white. This right hand one I want to be black. And then let's just set up the start and end Y position. So positive 540 for the Y start and negative 540 for the Y end. So now we've got a nice top to bottom gradient, really quite useful. It's particularly useful to create top to bottom graduations if you use this with images in multiply mode. Another thing I like to be able to do is to have a divider. So I'm just going to grab that gradient, drag it out into a new group. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this left hand color tag and I'm going to set its interpolation to constant, grab this black one and I'll set its location to 50%. So now we've got a top and bottom like that. And oh, actually I actually wanted to drag that out into a new group. I don't want it to be in the text group. Let's just turn that off. And let's, for example, turn on our text and right click, add image mask. We can use that gradient, switch to luminance. And now we've got a crop for our text like that. Okay, and it will be also useful to have a left right gradient. So let's duplicate that. And this time let's have negative 960 for the X start, zero for the Y, positive 960 for the X end, zero for the Y. So now we've got a, a left right as well. And we can call this group dividers. Probably even put that at the back there. Maybe move that gray ramp to the back as well. We don't need to see that. So we've just got our background. So let's now save this as a template. So what we can do is we can come to file and publish template. Now I've already set up a category, but if you haven't, you can create a new category. Actually, why not? Let's do that. Let's call this yours. And I've got a new category and we can call this your useful stuff and publish. And so now I'm going to close this down and I'm going to come over to file and new from project browser. And there's that yours category. And there is the template that we made. So we can open that up. There it is with all the things that we've done to it. And this is, you notice, is not the template. It's a copy of the template. So the template stays untouched, just as templates normally do. But we've got all our useful stuff in here, all ready to go. Or we can delete it if we think it's messing everything up. But, you know, we can come over to the project and we can switch our background color or whatever. So I think that's a pretty useful way of working. I have a number of templates for ongoing projects. They've all got sort of built-in animations as well. Lots of useful groups that relate to how I'm working. And it's a big time saver because I'm not starting from scratch every time. So anyway, hope that's a useful tip. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.